back up to um, the first drawing I ever made. <laughs> Not the first drawing I ever made, the first drawing I remember making, which is um, when I was five or six years old. I, I, I've been drawing since I was little or whatever. Everybody draws a little bit. But I made a drawing um, when I was maybe five where I didn't have any, I, and this is something I guess maybe young kids do too, but I, I specifically remember saying, I'm not gonna think about what I'm making, I'm just going to drag my eraser over the paper and just without thinking, make a mark and then look at it and then, and then make a drawing on that. Uh, make, I just made a drawing from something like that. And I, I just did that, I looked at the paper and um, I don't know if it was a conscious idea, let's do this, or if it just was something I was doing, just fiddling around being a kid. But I looked at the paper and um, it looked like, a, the shape looked like a dog. It looked like a dog, a cartoon dog, like a Hanna-Barbera cartoon dog. And I said, well, that's wonderful. And I just, all I did was trace it in. I just sort of went over those lines and, uh, and I was so happy with it. It was just, it felt really, really great uh, like this, I didn't, I didn't, this wasn't an idea that I brought here. I'm not copying Hanna-Barbera. I wasn't, um, I didn't have a plan, but this thing, it just was like a present. It was really neat. So I was happy to have, have that just show up. Um, and then I, I, I remember also um, looking into the grain of wood or looking at, looking down at the floor or looking at a wall or something like that and just seeing shapes and seeing patterns and thinking I, I, there's cartoon heads there are people smiling or making weird faces just sort of everywhere it's just like there's there's always these images that are just waiting to kind of bubble up or you see them or they suggest themselves but mostly what I found was that the most joyful thing was to have no idea at all what I was going to make and to just sit down with a pencil and paper and uh, my father sitting in the back over there will remember one day the, the, um, uh, the guy who lived across the street from us brought home a box of computer paper which was a thing uh, most people here can actually remember that there was perforated it was continuous one long sheet and it was just a box like this and it was enough to go forever and um, and I just would draw on that every day. I would just keep drawing and keep going and just keep going. Um, but I would just draw without a plan and see what happened and sometimes I would be delighted. Um, um, but I did, it, then I would notice that there were certain themes that would show up. The same images would show up over and over again. I keep drawing this bird, I keep drawing this dog, I keep drawing this kind of silly face or these few things are showing up all the time. Um, and so then I would say, well, maybe I'll draw that again. That was so good. I really like drawing that little bird. I think I'll draw him again. And, but I would draw it a second time, and it wouldn't be alive like the first time. The first time when it was an accident, it was alive. The second time when I tried to copy it, it was not alive. And it was very upsetting. Uh, and I, w I would say, well, what I'll do is I'll draw hard, and then I'll turn it over and then I'll just trace it, it'll be on the back. I won't even have to redraw it. I won't have to have any skill. I'm just gonna trace it over again. And it'll be the same thing, right? It'll be, the, I've made it twice. And then I'll know how to make it because I'll have done it twice. Maybe I'll do it a third time and I'll know what I'm doing. I, I kept having this idea, if you practice, if you make the thing a few times, you're gonna understand what you're doing. You're gonna know what you're doing and it won't be an accident and then you'll have control over it. Right? Um, I think this is the thing that kids do a lot when they try to, when they start drawing and they find that they might be good at it a little bit. Um, so it's, I've tried to do that, but it would never be alive. It would be something like the thing. And if I wanted to make a comic strip where you have to draw the thing six times and in different little squares, or if I wanted to tell a bigger story, I would try and do that. You could make an interesting little story, but the characters, they wouldn't be alive in the same way. Okay, so, um, so eventually I started to, I got a little older and I thought, well, these themes, these same imagery, the same images keep showing up and up and up, and I want to make some art out of that. And then I said, 
oh, these images, they're not just my images. I started to, to read too many books, right? I started to read a lot of books and they said, well, these images, the reason that they keep showing up is not because they're just, it's just an accident. It's because we, as people have this set of images, we have a vocabulary of images and we all share them. Even if you don't know that they all exist all over the world, we all have them and they all come up out of us because we're all people and we have similar kind of experiences where we start from. So everybody has these and they're just a natural thing. I said, well, I wanna, those, okay, those myths, and I'm not talking about Carl Jung or Joseph Campbell or all these people, they tell you, these myths, these stories, they show up everywhere, they're meaningful, they're important. I wanna investigate them. I wanna make some real art. This is a dangerous idea. I'm gonna make some serious art out of this stuff. So then it's the same thing again, where it's not a natural thing that just comes out, but it's a, uh, I'm gonna do something with it. I'm gonna turn it into something, and it's gonna be substantial. And it's gonna be about this larger conversation. It's gonna be painting. Oh, God. So that's like a real thing. That's like a, that's a, that's a history. That's a story. That's, a, that's the Western tradition. And that's a relationship with all of that or other things. Uh, so I'm gonna make all, I'm, that's what I'm doing now? I thought I just, I got, I, I made the thing and I loved it and it was a surprise and I was happy and now I'm doing all of these other things. And I, how did I get myself involved in that? A lot of school, a lot of talking to a lot of people about what it meant and what it was and what was important. And, um, and it seemed like it was, that what was important was to talk about what they were talking about, what, what we were talking about, talking about. Um, so, uh, so that it became more and more about that and it's getting away from me. But I want, but I, there's these, there's these things that happen in the work that there's this, that's that first thing was still important and I was trying to find it, but I'm trying to find it now from the outside in. Um, so I, I'm not making it from the inside out where I just, I make it and I'm, when I'm drawing it, there's no plan, there's no idea, um, it's no time, you lose time, lose track of time. You're not there anymore, you're not in that spot where you lose track of time, it's nothing, there's no worry, there's no thought, it's just happening and expressing itself. Now you're on the outside and you're like, I know there's something here, I know there's a thing here, if I keep working on it, everybody's talking about this thing and remember it used to be natural and uh, and I want and I know how to just would just come out but now I'm like I'm making paintings and we're we're all doing this we all have this shared project and I'm part of this conversation but at the center of it there used to be this thing there's this thing and I'm going to get back to it I'm going to draw so well my craftsmanship is going to be really good I'm going to I'm going to refine it I'm going to do it a hundred times Walter Rakowski said uh, uh, that's great. You, uh, when you made it once, that was an accident. Make it ten times, and then, you know, then it's a thing. And so I would say, oh, I'll make it a bunch. I'll keep iterating this thing until I get my hands around it and understanding it and, and make it better. Um, and sometimes you can do that. I found that sometimes I could do that. But usually, what would happen is I would make the thing. I would make it really substantial. I would have craftsmanship built in it. I might use my color theory. I might draw really carefully. I might be really particular with my mark making and it gets really, it looks three dimensional, it has volume and, I would, and that might be fine and that would all, that's like, um, that has, that's impressive a, a certain way but then to the life, that, that life part, the thing where it comes alive, that was always still an accident. It didn't matter how well it was built and how good the craftsmanship is, you still have to trip stupidly, blindly without thinking into the part where it comes alive. Um, and so I would just hope that it would happen, and sometimes it would, and sometimes it wouldn't. I don't have any idea what, how that works. Um, so, started out making things, and then uh, from the inside out, and then I end up, I take those ideas, make them into something. So that's from the outside in. Take those, those subjects, right, and develop the subjects. Um, uh, and I try to do that with a lot of paintings, a lot of different things. Instead, what I try to do this year that was a little different was, well, I'm just, I'm just gonna draw. I'm gonna just, I've been thoughtlessly drawing. I'm still doing that all the time. But there's, they're doodles. They're just these insubstantial sketchbook things. They're these things that don't really amount to much. They're not a whole piece of art. They're not a real finished thing. Um, I decided, well, I'm just gonna 
use those, instead of worrying about the subjects in them and trying to understand the subjects and talk about the subjects that keep coming up in them, I'm just gonna use them as objects. I'm just gonna use them as the raw materials to make other things with. Because I can't take these doodles and elevate them into anything else by making a smarter version of them. Instead of taking the subject, elevating it, creating a whole other thing that's not a lot, I'm gonna just take the things, they have this kind of weird little life to them, and then I'll just use the object matter instead of the subject matter. I'll cut them up, I'll play with them, I'll put them together with other things, and I'll just keep tinkering and playing and see what happens. And I found that when I was doing that, it would it stayed more alive and they seemed more fresh and maybe they weren't as smart, but they were just, they had more pleasure in making them. And, um, and I wanted to do it. And this is only a third of what I made since March. Um, and I just made them all the time. And I made them uh, on my kitchen table while my kids are playing music or uh, I'm cooking in the one room, I've got something boiling, I'm cu cutting stuff up. Uh, we've got a, you know, dogs are running around making a ridiculous noise and everything's happening in life all at once and I'm just making them in the middle of it. And it's not a special other thing. It's just a part of the thing of just doing all the things that you do. And, um, and uh, I just, I, I, I've been really enjoying it. Can you talk about your willingness to um, change things up in terms of media that you use. I mean, in the last <clears throat> in the last ten years, you've had shows here that have had paintings, scratch board, graphic novels, Mobius strip installations. I mean, you have <laughs> really run the gamut in terms of the presentations you've had just here. Um, and it sounds um, yeah. So, uh, so uh, I made a, I made paintings for bunch of years and then probably right around when you started I, I made that graphic novel and that was the that was the sort of the first moment of this idea that um, that the the life of the drawing should sort of like what it wants to do what the what the work wants to do that the drawing wants to do should tell me what to do instead of me making art and then, <laughs> I don't know, but instead of me having some, uh, some external idea about what, uh, what art should be. Um, uh, and since then, um, yeah, that, that was the first time where I were just, obs just obsessively drawing and following where the work wanted to go was leading the way. Um, and I think that's just kind of, I've just followed along that line, and I just, uh, I think that also the pendulum tends to swing a lot. Uh, so from that to this, part of it is, um, those are really, those really were all um, very tight and controlled things, and, um, and then that feels claustrophobic, and so you go the other way. So I've been kind of doing that back and forth in the work uh, the whole time to make things, some things that were much more controlled and tight and resolved in a certain way, and then it falls apart, and um, I don't get to decide what it's about anymore. I have to just stop and reassess and follow kind of thing. So. Can you talk about the difference in approach where you know, you've know you got a scratch board where you're taking things away from the piece as opposed to something like a collage where you're adding the pieces on top of the piece itself? I don't know. I mean, uh, 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 as subtractive or additive. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I think the subtractive that, that 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 where there's a black slab and you're just um, you're removing the dark to get to the light. I think that there was something just embarrassingly overtly metaphorical about that, um, and that that it was like a it was kind of just some it was a dark series um, and. Uh, and this is, this, like I say, it feels like this, the swing the other direction. <laughs>